We are live here with Irina Cumberland from Palo Alto. Um, Burlingame right now, but it's very temporary. Burlingame right now, very temporary. So, um, Irina was a, a student in my most recent semester, and I wanted to. She worked really hard, and um, that's why she's got a lot of uh, really interesting, unique value proposition. And she doesn't have to sell art anymore. <laughs> that so, didn't work anyway. Yeah, it didn't work. It wasn't working anyway. She didn't like it. So just to give a little bit of background, um, Irina used to, well, she paints oceans beautifully, like masterfully. I can't even do that. And I live across from the damn ocean. Um, yeah. And uh, that doesn't, doesn't matter. But she has this masterful skill of painting the ocean. And she was just painting the ocean over and over and over again. <laughs> Without you know any any real distinction of why she, her ocean paintings were unique from anybody else's ocean paintings, mm -hmm. and when you go through the making art making money semester and you determine your why your purpose you dig really deep and you actually pull out the truth of your soul and one thing that's really interesting about Irina is we didn't find this out until we actually got on our one on one was that she has a medical degree. That so she's trained scientist and comes from a family of scientists. So I don't. Uh, for those who are um, in the know, what the ocean is is a giant fractal, repeating fractals. And when we there's science to support that when we humans expose ourselves to fractals, which are trees in the forest or the ocean waves, uh, we relax quite quite significantly and quite measurably. So when I pointed this out, that there was this whole body of science that be behind the benefits of Irina's fractal paintings, she got really excited and started to just, instead of just seeing herself as just an artist, she saw herself for all who she was, which is an artist and a scientist. And it blended it together into a very, in, I think, a very interesting, unique value proposition. Does that about sum it up? Am I missing anything? No, that's pretty much right. <laughs> okay, so you can see her ocean oh, yeah. background. So, again, when, I, I, when Irina started, she was trying to sell ocean paintings. So it wasn't going so well because she was trying to sell art. When we identified the value above and beyond the art, then things opened up. The doors opened up. And so Irina's just getting started. She's just, I mean, just, just getting started, but she's got uh, a great promising value proposition that I think she could do very well with. So um, I'm just going to say, I'm going to ask you this, I mean, off the top of your head, just off the top of your head, what's the first thing that comes to mind for you, which was the, the first big lesson that you learned during this semester? Um, I think the main thing that I learned is the even possibility that it never came up to my mind to connect the rest of my life to my art. It's like, you know what I mean? It, it, it just, I thought, okay, art is one thing, this is my art, and this is my life. And in this semester, going through the lessons, I'm kind of, I, I realized, okay, it can be working together I don't have to separate it it's it like, has to actually for it to work right exactly and I and I just it never even came to me that I can possibly connect medicine and art I mean that that was something that totally out there's no way I could probably come up with it well that's why you had your one out with me so <laughs> Now, and you studied medicine for nine years, right? Or something like nine, 13? Yeah, that, that's about right. Well, yeah. the last last couple of years, it was actually working at, uh, at the hospital, so it's... Okay, so I wanna, what I wanna point out is this. When you are, this, when you get to the point where you know your why, you know your mission, then you have to figure out, okay, well, how am I gonna add value above and beyond my art to solve this one problem that's really worth solving? When you do that, you can't just look at your painting skills or your ability to, I don't know, hammer bronze. You've gotta look at all of your resources. So it was interesting, almost startling to me that Irina was ignoring that part of herself or that resource. My resource, simply when I started, was I was close to the wine country. <laughs> okay, it was just that simple. I didn't, I, it, so 
this is a great lesson here. So yes, you can't, not only can you combine, you, you must combine because as artists, we sell a very personal product and that's where our business parts ways with conventional goods and services. It's very, very personal and it mm -hmm. contains you. So, all right, great. What was the second? I'm going to pick up this puppy while you tell me what the second um, big lesson you learned. Oh, um, the second lesson. Oh, my God. There was so many. Just what pops into your head. Here's Rubble, everybody. She's my new puppy. Oh, hello, Rubble. Oh, <laughs> so cute. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know. There's no right answer. Just what pops into your head. Well, another one. I'm not sure if it's a lesson or not, but I'm, okay. I was very happy to... Uh, connect with my study partners with other people in class mm -hmm. that that was amazing we still communicate till till that time this time and I, I've seen one girl in person I mean oh, we cool. in the Bay Area and I mean it 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 was pretty amazing and it just so much support it especially I do have artist friends other artist friends but they're thinking a little different than me <laughs> You're not you know, thinking about being supported, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you know, with, with people who already in this course, that that's like um, you already know that they kind of think in the same line with with you, and it, it's just a lot easier to explain everything, yeah. to communicate and get yeah. support, and they understand where, exactly where I'm going through, and somehow always know what to say, like. Nice. To support me so I mean it, it'd been amazing I don't know if it's a lesson or not I guess it is so, so I think that it's I, a lesson because most artists are in competition with one another when they right. when one gets successful the other a lot of times the other artists will get pissed off you know yeah. like oh what do you mean you okay look at this this is I'm not in control of this puppy so anyway um oh community is definitely a very important element in not just the semester but in any type of building any kind of enterprise any kind of challenge having a community of like-minded people is an important and very essential ingredient so I'm glad it is a lesson I think you did learn a lesson that that community is available to you here and you took advantage of it I mean you reached out right you didn't just sit on your hands yeah, it, it, I mean, it's, it's been amazing. And uh, as you said, there is no competition, no nothing, because they're doing a very different things for me. And it's right. not, we're not like we all do an art. No, we working in a completely different areas. Because right, because you're not doing, you're not selling art, right? What's so funny right, about that, exactly. what, I, what I'm teaching you guys is actually called the Blue Ocean Strategy. No pun intended, Irina. It's actually called the Blue Ocean Strategy, which is one of the book. I, the Blue Ocean Strategy existed before these authors ever wrote the book because I created Blue Ocean Strategies before the book was written. But um, that's essentially what I'm teaching you. Art is an oversaturated market, and so you can't compete. You have to eliminate the competition by not competing. So this, you're not going to compete with your with these people with the people you're you're with. So it's it's. It's wonderful. You don't have to worry about that. Right. And it's so much easier not to worry about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't have to worry about being sensitive to, you just, you know, you, you were on the same path. Okay. So what would be number three? What would the number three lesson uh, that pops into your head? Uh, probably focus like on one, one thing and actually like, Organize my mind, I would say. It's, yes. it's like focus on one particular thing at a time, which I'm still not doing a great job at, but at least I'm aware of my problem now. And I'm like, I'm trying to find it, fight it. But uh, it, like before I was like, I had so all of many of my ideas, like artistic ideas or any other. And I just wanted to do all of them all at, at the same time. And how you know, would that work out? Let's say you were painting a painting, playing the flute, and making a cake all at the same time. That was about right. I mean, it was just 
crazy and i didn't know what to do and of course it, it like it's it's not even time get uh, spread too much it, it's even thoughts even though I, when i'm painting one thing and i'm thinking about totally different thing and when i do that thing i'm thinking about something else and it's just even this uh mental concentration in one on one thing is very important like did you, did you gain some focus from the exercises that dr pratt teaches us in the that, that was like the main uh the main way to to focus i would say it takes four minutes not even a day and it changes your life i mean he's used these are the it's the same exact protocol that he's taught to people who've gone on to win grammys olympic medals i mean I, it, you know it's he's, he's the real deal you can look him up these are the people I, i'm oh. reading his book right now it's like it's, it's really good yeah it, there's just so much more to it that he was able to fit in the in the lecture and it, it yes. just it's it just amazing well he's so. written many books so that'll just give you a good that's his latest book so i'm glad it focus is a number one challenge that artists report to me the number two challenge that they report to me is confidence but the two are oh, yeah, together when you gain con when you gain focus you take focused action you gain confidence would would you say that's been true for you yeah definitely like before I couldn't even it's like when people asked me what I do I totally panicked I was saying anything <laughs> except for I do art I, I would say like because I have another business and I, I, I do some other uh, things like day job I would say but the the fact that I'm an artist came up at the very end like i was so uncomfortable to even say that i paint something. it has quite a stigma and it's uh people don't know what to do feel sorry for you or admire you if they think that you're financially successful they mm -hmm. admire you they really admire you but if they have any sense that you're struggling or that you're a kept woman right or man then they will pity you. So it's a really interesting, we're the most admired and we're most scoffed at when we say the word artist. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just very confusing, I would say confusing word. When you say you artist, people don't know, as you said, like they the don't know if it's being. good, if it's bad, if it's like, what are they gonna say next? And it's like, oh, right. okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's the end of a conversation. Yeah, it is. The, it's a conversation killer. That's for sure. Um, just like artist statements, huge conversation killer. So number oh. one, you <laughs> learned, you, oh, so you learned community is essential. You learned focus is essential and um, that you could incorporate and you, you must incorporate all your resources and all your experience, not all of it, actually. I take that back. It's not everything. It's just combining who you are oh. as a person because art is personal. And what's interesting is I'll bet your paintings have so much more meaning to you personally as a result of making this connection. Right, and it had the more meaning, like it had a lot of meaning even before I started thinking about it, I just didn't realize it. Like at all the fact that um, now I, I'm aware of, now I, I that I know the science, that I actually dig into it, I know why it made me feel so good, these paintings and the ocean by itself, but even like I have a painting of this particular amazing day in Florida ocean that I have it in my room and every time I look at it, I feel so good, like I'm back to that ocean. And I just never thought of it, like I never thought what why it's happening. It's almost you didn't understand your own inspiration in a way until... Exactly. So, yeah. all right, so um, yeah. let me... So there's one statistic that you cited about the number of seconds it takes when you get yourself into an environment of fractals, your stress or heart rate changes at what percent or what you told me once before. Um, it's like a general, uh, they, they took um, the heart rate and they took uh, an encephalogram, the Okay, so bio, uh, total biofeedback. Everything together, so they said that the stress level drops down 60% in the first second. Of That's amazing. Doing. Like, yeah. what is that? There's nothing you can drink. There's nothing you can, you know, pill you can pop, like, to get you to that. So this is a powerful, powerful piece of knowledge and highly freaking marketable if you do this right, Irina, and you're going to. I know you will. So yeah. let's, let's so 
there are people who are listening who may not, uh, may be thinking about the semester, may never enroll in the semester, or already in, you know, who knows who's listening. If you had to give them the, another artist, or maybe even yourself before you even started, one piece of parting advice, what would you tell her? One thing, to, would, what one thing would you tell her? So I guess one general thing, I, I just, it, it's can't, I, I can't choose one thing, oh my God. <laughs> well, the first thing that came to mind is really just focus in one, in something one and stick with it long enough to like, but I think the semester helps you to actually find that one thing that you should stick with. And I would say with people who enrolled in a semester, like first these first weeks, it probably should be semester. Because otherwise, you know, like you probably should just really, really concentrate and put it because that's a lot of work. You have to put the work and then once once you find that thing, just really, really stick to it, not spread yourself all over the place, which right. I'm, I'm still, that's also advice to, to myself because right. I'm still not doing a perfect job on that, but yeah, eventually I will. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's this is a reoccurring thing. That's why, and you this you, you know you go at your own pace too. I think that's also important. Don't compare yourself to other people, and yeah. how fast they're going or how slow they're going. All that matters is that you choose your. Everyone has to run their own race, and you go at your pace, and you'll get yeah. there as long as you're consistent. You'll get there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not even um, that. That's not what I was gonna say. To, to just concentrate on one one thing, but just to know at least what is the main thing and stick with it long enough, no matter if it's all you do or if it's something on the side that you just have like an hour a week to, to dedicate to, but just really, really focus at it, even right. mentally, even if you can't put so much time at it. Right. Because so, eventually it will pay off. It it kind of it pays off usually. You're more confident than you were when we started. Because I talked to you on the phone initially, and you're more confident. I I feel more confident. I can see it, and you sound more confident. And that sounds that's, that's great. Good. That's music to my ear. <laughs> very good. I'm very proud of you. You did a lot of hard work, and the fact that you got in there and made connections with the other students. It helped you, but I'm sure it helped them too. You know, what goes around comes around. So you help, you help elevate the whole community when you get in there and you reach out and you ask for help and you give help. It just, that's the, the best, the very best. So I'm looking, forward, I, I'm looking forward to seeing how you progress. It's going to take some time. It's like you just planted the tree. You just planted the little sapling, right? So now we got to give it, got to water it. and. Give it food. What happens? Yeah, and see what happens. And it's going to be more. And you're a scientist, so take this experimental approach to the hypothesis, which is your unique value proposition and target market. Yeah, I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Rebel. I think is sleeping, so this is good. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate your time, and um, I'm going to share. I'm going to share this in, in the semester and on uh, so and on social media. I did not get your permission when we started. Is that cool with you? I can share. Oh, the, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, everyone, you should ask before you do that. But anyway, we're good, and I will see you in the Facebook group because you're going to give me updates. Definitely. All right. Take good care. Have a good night. You too. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye-bye.